Hello, and welcome back to Get a Grip on Rebates. This is Juan Carlos Blacker, that's John Wilson, and we're brought to you by TCP. TCP, the craziest people in lighting. You should go visit them at tcpi.com. They've got all the products you need and want in lighting. So, John, how are you doing today? Oh, man, doing wonderful, doing wonderful. Beautiful day. I know we got a topic lined up that I think we both want to uh, to chew on. Uh, I bet our listeners are hip to this as well because it's rolling out into utility programs, these rebate programs. I'm talking about tunable lighting. It's here. It's finally here. And Woo, uh, utilities are giving lighting. rebates. They are giving rebates. They are giving rebates. We're talking color tunable lighting, just to be clear. Uh, and, um, and, and yeah, utilities are giving rebates. Why? I think mainly because DLC is starting to specify them. Is that, is that right, John? Uh, man, this this proves to our listeners that Juan Carlos and I aren't teaming up to try and sound smart ahead of this show. Because I'm talking about uh, lumen output field tuning as well as color tuning out there. So so I, I'm actually oh. seeing both. And, and uh, I'm one step removed from the DLC process currently taking it on. So... Maybe you can paint those corners in and, you know, e- either either we're ships passing in the day or we make a really good team. We're peanut butter and jelly. We're going to find out on this podcast. <laughs> well, we are going to we are going to pass out, find out because I'll be honest, I was I was thinking all color tuning, not field tuning. My, my mistake. But let's talk about color tuning for, for, for a couple of minutes. Um, for those who, who, who don't know, color tuning light is light that changes color temperature. So there's there's three different types of color tuning, right? You have dim to warm. Right, which is going from your regular color temperature down to a warmer color temperature as you dim. There's full color, or sorry, there's white tunable, which means you can just change your Kelvin temperature on demand, which is kind of awesome. Uh, and then there's full color, color tunable, which is used for um, to change any color, blue, green, red, whatever, whatever. So, um, but what, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about field tunable. Well, I think it includes that as well, but more specifically, I'm talking about like being able to pick up for a distributor, you're stuck in one product that basically has a dip switch on the back and it might have two dip switches. And one of them is basically variable lumen output, which, which also is variable wattage usage, right? So, uh, you know, this is for, for distributors who have long lamented, you know, ever since the first generation of LEDs and they were like, man, I just got this stuff on the shelf and it's obsolete right and then ever since then we've seen distributors don't want to carry all these different skews for multiple color temperatures so now single product uh it could be a troffer it could be an exterior light and not only is the user able to adjust between maybe three preset colors like you were describing uh but even more specifically and applicable to these commercial rebate programs is that product no longer has a fixed wattage right Utility programs, they've built in this clean delta, and then they know how to handle control savings. But, you know, there's this oversight element we're all familiar with. And all of a sudden, I mean, they're doing it. Utilities are getting there. Uh, Products are on the market that have a range between 15 watts and 150 watts, right? And and that is determined by the last person to walk up and touch it. So... We're starting to see it. That, that's what I was getting excited about. Right, right. Uh, different, yeah, absolutely different for, on the utilities pr- perspective than color tunable because you don't get a huge wattage shift on the color tunable. Um, but when you're talking about lumen output, you definitely get that wattage shift. So how should utilities handle that? Because that's uh, that's complicated, right? Because if they come in, they usually have a, a set number they want you or suggest that you use that, but you can you can change that. So so if you're a utility, how do you how do you how do you plan for that? And what what kind of rebate do you provide? You know, Juan Carlos, one of the advantages of doing strategic uh, planning, you know, from up here in the booth, so to speak, as we are, is that, you know, we don't have to put ourselves on the vanguard of the spear uh, and get it wrong in all the multiple ways. I'm actually kind of going to adopt <laughs> a, a sit back and wait and watch. And typically, you get to see a couple ways that utilities are doing it wrong before you figure out how they're doing it right. So maybe this is a topic that we can revisit. The example that I saw most recently, 
I, I, I think they're on the right track because uh, there needs to be a little bit of an honor system. Like I'm all about that. I, I want like utilities shouldn't try and micromanage. Like don't don't require a picture be sent in of the last setting. You know, don't don't require that. Uh, so I saw it was like a matrix right. setup, and it said, "Hey, we get it. It's like it's like you have to tell us where you are." But sure enough, I'm like looking at products, and I'm looking at their matrix, and I'm like, "Dude, you guys didn't put the." greater than or equal to sign you know it's like little things like that like you're just setting yourself up for administrative hurdles that are going to trip people up so uh we should follow up on this i'll try and track down a couple more examples other than the one that i saw come in i was excited for it i'm not gonna lie i was like dude i can't believe this is good because i could see how utilities would be more risk averse but then thinking about our last call i was like when remember remember when greg was bringing up all the things that utilities the greatest all hits the simulations. Parade? I right. was like, oh, man, utilities are going to, people think they're done with their hits, but they're going to come back. It, well, we know they right, got right, one more I, top 40 for everybody. I could see some ridiculous requirement that's like, uh, put it in and then break off the, the switch and send it to us so we know you can't switch it switch it out of whatever l lumen lumen bucket you put it in. Something cr ridiculous or crazy like that. Which We're be, requiring that UL tape go over the switch to then, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, and we know that that could definitely happen, particularly up there in Canada for for get a grip on, on lighting guys. They they like to do crazy things in Canada, but no, in all seriousness, it is a problem. It is something I think we'll have to get back to because these products are just now getting into the market. They're just now becoming uh, popular, and they they should be rebated because they are energy saving products for the most part. Switching no, back it's to not color, just that. color. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 you. Well, I want to say this, if, if utilities want to be good partners with industry, they got to understand that this matters a lot for distributors. They need to offer incentives that work for distributors. And this is such a big deal for distributors to not have to carry all these different SKUs, multiple lumen outputs and multiple colors, right? So I think, I think that's really something for utility folks to keep in mind, sort of representing the industry side. Right. And I think they're I think they're starting to get there. The utility is starting to walk that line with the color tunable, not so much a field tunable where you can change color, but you're not getting those huge wattage variations because we are seeing there we're getting DLC specs um, that uh, that are allowing those products to be into rebate pro programs, just like a non tunable LED. Right. Uh, and the right. solar tunables have a ton of advantages, non energy benefits. Right. Uh, they can yep. be used for for health and wellness programs. They can be used for um, uh, like uh, like classrooms. They help they help students study. They we've seen increased health coming out of some of the uh, tunable products that take you over your circadian rhythm. All this fun stuff that we could spend probably hours discussing. But all that how about how about just benefits. trying to make some romance? How about just trying to set the mood right? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Well, that's what that's why I got the dim to warm lights. They, it gets the mood right. It feels like the old bulbs we used to have. So, so no, I think I think we're going to come back to these these two uh, these two examples in, in future discussions because there's a lot to be said about them. I, for one, big fan of the color tunable. Again, taking the utility perspective, a little wary on the field tunable on the on the on the lumen range. I know you are you're our industry guy. You're focused on industry, so what are your what are your final thoughts on it? Bring it on, baby. Pour it on. Let's make mistakes. Let's get out there. If you're a utility, take chances. Be bold. This is a technology that will get installed because electrical contractors want to push it because it's easy. Distributors want to sell it because it makes sense. So let's make a deal, utilities. Let's work together and avoid easy mistakes. I think that's it. Agreed. Agreed. Except Agreed. let's tell people about our friends at TCPI.com, TCP Lighting. They got a little bit of everything, folks. You got to check them out. They got a lot of cool stuff. TCP, <laughs> I think that's the show. That is the show. Thank you, John. This is Juan Carlos, and we'll see you next time.